Praise the Lord. My name is Natasha from Love's Care Ministries. Thank you for joining me for another video for Disciples Journey. Today I'll be reading from a blog article that I wrote and posted on the Love's Cure Ministries website. Feel free to check out the site for all of the articles uh, that are posted. This one is the most recent and the title of it is called Breaking the Cycle of Sinful Patterns. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, share that with you on the YouTube channel as hopefully this will help cross-reference and encourage those who do watch the videos to hop on over to the website and check out more information and just uh, continue the fellowshipping of sharing the gospel. So again, as I mentioned, the article is called Breaking the Cycle of Sinful Patterns. This article was posted on July 25th. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and begin. And it says, Imagine having a revelation of Jesus Christ. Imagine the relief of reading God's word and living the first moments of understanding and knowledge. Imagine the freedom of peace and joy, fulfillment and assurance. Dark clouds give way to vibrant blue skies. The feeling of no longer being alone, knowing you are saved by the blood of the Holy One. A chaotic world of thunder turned bright and beautiful. Pink and purple skies. The narrow way clearly seen. You're happily carrying your cross following Messiah along the bumpy road and then you trip you fall again the thunderous sound of rain and dampened skies return salvation is a gift sanctification is a journey and that journey is called life why do we battle? Why do we endure? Why do we hurt, feel pain, anguish, defeat, helplessness, alone? Notice that hopelessness is removed from this list of tribulations, of trials. The concept that is widely misunderstood is that believers no longer have problems. The world says things like, they act like they're perfect. Yeah, we have it all figured out, don't we? I can name a slew of comments, reactions, rebuttals, etc. that are commonly used as if the words of the unlearned are the defining silver line of all wisdom. Hardly. True. No one is perfect by the world's standards. The question is whose standard do we live by? I would hope and pray our answers are the same. God's holy standard. The only standard that matters to us his children. The Holy Scriptures teach us that we are to be found in the acceptable, holy, and in the perfection of God's will. As I've mentioned in previous posts, perfection in the biblical form and sense of holiness is the completion of the finished work of Christ in us. The evidence of the Holy Spirit in us that allows us to receive the understanding, knowledge, wisdom, and revelation of who Yeshua HaMashiach is and what he has done for us all because God loved us first. When you understand that sanctification is a process of the molding of the clay 
into the form of holiness. Then you will understand that God will know his child on that great day because when he looks upon you, he will see his son. Because you chose to know him, obey him, and love him. Living a life of endurance and yet obedience. Fighting the good fight of faith. Being strong and of very good courage. Remember Joshua chapter 1. God's instruction, support, and encouragement to Joshua encompassed a promise of blessing, success in life. And what is that success? The ability to overcome trials, tribulations, obstacles, addictions, sicknesses, habits, strongholds, sin, and remnants of sin that Yeshua has freed you from indeed. And yet your flesh wants time to catch up to where your heart is. Your flesh wants to war with your soul and have the ever-present feeling of guilt and shame replay in your mind. Your falling and your guilt of failing have made you a prisoner of your pain, a warrior of the battle in your mind, a victim of your shame, yearning to be free. When you as a believer finally accept the realization that the fact that you are aware of what is truly evil and what is truly good, when you as a believer understand the true difference between right and wrong, when you as a believer know in your heart, mind, and soul that you are washed in the blood of Yeshua our Messiah, and really believe that you are no longer a sinner. You are now a saint. When you, beloved, make it up in your heart, your mind, and your soul that you are going to be obedient to God's will. The Lord says, follow me. Do not worry. Cast your cares and your burdens on me and take my yoke upon you. It is easy and my burden is light. Then you will break the cycle of sinful patterns. Beloved, don't you see? Christ makes everything simple. We complicate things. We overthink things. We bask in humanism and try to do it all. The problem solvers we strive to be. Beloved, don't you see? The Bible is a love story. Just as a man asks for a woman's hand in marriage, meaning he asks her to submit herself to him and she graciously and lovingly accepts, meaning she is giving him permission to protect her. And that umbrella of protection means that he is willing and will not only protect, but provide support unconditionally love and tell her the truth because that's what true love is the example of Christ laying down his life just as Christ who is the bridegroom laid down his life for the church symbolically known as the bride when Christ knocks on the door of your heart 
and you open the door and ask him to come in and dwell with you. You are submitting yourself to him. You are agreeing to be protected just as a woman agrees for her love to protect her. Not being treated as less than, but to have her role in biblical order just as the husband and children and all other members of the family. Now you can see the significance in the roles we as children walk out in faith to be a benefit and to edify the saints of the kingdom according to Ephesians chapter 4 verses 12 through 32. The Lord has given you the gift of life. He has given you a purpose and identity when he formed and knitted you together in the womb. He knew you before you were brought into this earthly existence. God is the potter and you are his clay that he is molding into the perfection of holiness. Your battles are not the war. Your journey is preparing you for the war. And you can't gain strength without knowing who strength is. You learn who strength is in your weakness. Christ is our righteousness, and he will take over when the pain of your journey is too much to bear and too chaotic to handle. Are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to be honest with yourself and our God and King about where you are in your struggles, your weaknesses, hindrances, the past and present traumas that are holding you captive and turning you into something else, something strange? Because of the rooted sadness that is now anger and frustration, the pain that fuels the desire for justice. Are you willing to believe the promise that as long as you follow him, he will give you the grace and strength to overcome the battles you are fighting? Call on the name of Yeshua Jesus and remember that everything must bow to the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, each and everything under the earth, on the earth, and above the earth. The Father has given his beloved Son all authority over the heavens and earth and all that is therein. When you realize the magnitude of this truth, your large obstacles will become like a grain of sand because you have handed over your cares and left your burdens at the feet of the throne. Be vulnerable, be authentic, be raw, be honest about the good the bad and the ugly. Be willing. Be faithful. Be obedient. Follow the ways of Christ. Read God's word daily. Pray. Praise him. Be washed clean in his blood. In high sock. Smell the sweet aroma of myrrh and aloes emanating from his robe of righteousness and holiness. Be clothed in linen and white. Be peaceful and be still. And know that he is the almighty God and King of Israel who has never left you. 
and you will see that you will no longer feel like a slave to sin because you endure the remnant of it. But you will live life and live life more abundantly as it is given to you. For you are a conqueror through Yeshua, our Messiah, Jesus Christ. And you will realize your flesh had to submit to the spirit of life within you. Your warring flesh just had to catch up and fall in line with what your heart already knows is true. Jesus loves you. And if you obey our God and King, follow him and seek first the kingdom of God, all the things will be added unto you according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Yeshua paid the ransom. You are saved, delivered. That's the free eternal gift. Now endure the process. This is the journey. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, in the New King James Version, the first passage that I'll read from is entitled, The Word Discovers Our Condition, and it says, Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The second passage is entitled, Our Compassionate High Priest. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. May we meditate on the word of the Lord. May we remember to be holy for he is holy. And may we always acknowledge and come to the throne of our compassionate High Priest, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Messiah, Warrior King, who goes on our behalf before us to make a way and clear the narrow path that we may be reconciled through him unto the Father. May we all have peace and may grace be multiplied. Until next time. Bye, friends.